Either or, Elliot Smith's seminal 1997 album is a record defined by contradictions. In one sense, it's a farewell album. Either or would be Smith's last record made in his adopted hometown of Portland, Oregon, before he left for New York and later L.A. It would also be his last record for indie label Kill Rock Stars, before he got the attention of Hollywood, and soon a major label. But Either Or can also be heard as an introduction, featuring some of Smith's most beloved songs, like Between the Bars. Drink up, baby, stay up all night with the things you could do, you won't, but you might. And The Ballad of Big Nothing. The album marked Elliot Smith's first release as a full-time solo artist after the dissolution of his band Heat Miser. While praise for Smith's two previous solo albums and his legendary live show were spreading around the Portland area, Heat Miser, the band he co-fronted along with Neil Gust, had signed to Virgin Records and appeared to be on the verge of a breakthrough. But it was not to be. Their final album, 1996's Mike City Sons, was not the commercial success the label envisioned but it foreshadowed the work Smith would go on to make, particularly Plain Clothes Man, the album's sweet, hushed second track. Everybody's second at home, always trying to get me alone, an easy way to lose it all. Incorporating Heat Miser's immediacy without sacrificing the intimacy of Smith's previous solo work, either or was Smith's boldest pop effort yet. During the making of the album, he was heavily influenced by the Beatles, listening to Magical Mystery Tour every day and incorporating the album's lush pop sound and bright choruses into his own lo-fi setting. Smith recorded with producers Tom Rothrack and Rob Schnaff and played all of the instruments himself, mimicking the feeling of a full band. The majestic layered sound of the record was created by Smith double-tracking his guitar and vocals, giving two nearly identical performances in almost every song. It showcased some of Smith's most pointed lyrics, from the anti-capitalist Rose Parade. Throwing out candy that looks like money. To the entertainment industry takedowns in Pictures of Me and Angelus. So sick and tired of all these pictures of me. In Cupid's Trick, Smith created his darkest and most elaborate arrangement yet, but the lyrics remain something of a mystery. He chose not to include the words in the album's liner notes, explaining, I can't say because it's too stupid. At the time it made perfect sense, but now I just don't want anybody to know. Smith called the album's closing track, Say Yes, insanely optimistic, and claimed to have written it in just five minutes. A simple, earnest love song, it would go on to be one of Smith's most beloved tracks, if one of his least characteristic. During the making of the album, Smith developed a mass of outtakes, like the title track and Miss Misery, which he would contribute to Gus Van Sant's Goodwill Hunting, lying about its origins so that it could be nominated for an Oscar and performed at the ceremony. He did not win the award. It went to Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On, but his career would never be the same in the aftermath. With the help of John Bryan, XO saw Smith finally achieve the Beatles-esque pop tunes that may have been floating around in his head, but for many, the sparse beauty of either or is his finest achievement. Walking out center circle Both of you can just fade to blood 